Welcome back, everybody. Today we're kicking off a new series, the Market Monday Review. This will be a series that starts on Tuesday morning if it takes off, where I talk about what happened on Monday, what I think might happen the rest of the week, what to expect, how can you adjust your trades. I'll even showcase the trades I put on Monday because that's probably my most active day because I put in a lot of limit orders and see if stuff gets executed. And today I think we've got quite a bit of content. So first off, today was obviously a red day. You got the NASDAQ was down 1.39%. Not really too concerned about that. It seems to be like an average movement for a day. Uh, and the other thing, Russell 2000 down about 1%, 1.4% as well. Nothing too fancy going on there. Just a couple of stocks. Red day. It happens. Uh, luckily, if you're trading like a 30 delta puts or calls, or actually, if, guess, luckily, luckily, if you're selling at like 30 delta puts, you probably weren't tested today on your individual stocks. But we'll take a look at that momentarily. The thing that did surprise me though is that the VIX only went up like a buck sixty-two. Like in the last month, we've seen it spike off smaller drops, or even like when the stock market was going up, we saw the VIX spike a couple of times. So I would have expected the VIX to go up to like twenty-three to twenty-five range, a little bit more. So I'm not quite sure why it's so little. It makes me a little hesitant to be honest. On a lot of Discord servers I'm in, I'm seeing a lot of people concerned about uh, the Fed's talk coming this Wednesday. Some people think that they're going to be talking about trying to taper fear, but uh, others think that they're going to be talking about raising interest rates. And, you know, if they raise the interest rates, stocks tend to go down. So being in bullish positions, not that good. I think we might see the VIX go up tomorrow, even if this market stays flat or it just barely goes down a little bit. I think the VIX could increase. So be aware that that could happen. If the VIX increases, premium gets injected into your trades or your option contracts that you're short. And so just be prepared to see some red tomorrow. Even if the stocks aren't moving, you might see some red if volatility increases. And I think it will in anticipation of that meeting coming up. And you might continue to go into Wednesday as well. On the other side, on the other side of the coin, if you aren't already in a trade, it might be a good time to sell some plays because I think VIX is going to go up a little bit like on Tuesday and Wednesday. We saw that most of the stocks were down about... 1.4 percent but my watch list I'm looking at the individual stocks that are usually on my watch list a lot of these are down three to four percent five percent like a lot of stuff that i think a lot of retail investors trade in are down a lot more than that 1.4 percent and this is why i kind of think why did the vix not go up more than it did today so that's kind of where i get that feeling from or that so anyway today i made a couple trades i also became a dividend investor basically uh let me go ahead and pull up my, my trade log for today. And you can see I started off by selling a bunch of the stuff that I talked about in my last two videos. And actually, I think they're a good. AAL was on my top three option plays for Monday. I think it's still a valid play, even though AAL, I think, shot down today a little bit. Went down to 17. So it was a little closer to the money than I would like to be, but I think it's still a pretty good play overall. Uh, some other things that I put on was uh, CCL, I put on the 15 put. That was on my Sunday night video. Uh, Intel, again, another Sunday night video thing. And NIO, I did sell a 27 put. I already have a play at the 35 that I'll probably close and then use this as like the rolled for credit kind of thing. Just, I put it on before I actually closed my previous trade. Uh, some other things I did is I did manage to roll my Virgin Galactic put down a strike to January 21st, I think that is or January 16th, okay? So I rolled it out about a month for about a three cent debit, which means I paid an extra $3 per contract to roll it down a strike. What I figured here is that I'm paying $3 to take off $100 of risk if stuff continues to go against this position. And overall, like if Virgin Galactic goes above 16, I'll still be proper on the trade because I did collect a premium the first time I got into this. So. This is one of those rare times where I rolled for a debit. Actually, it might be the first time I rolled for a debit. And I was okay with that because I'm taking off some risk by doing that. Taking off like $100 of risk because instead of having to buy at $17 a share, I'll buy at $16 a share if I was wrong and Virgin Galactic stays down for a little bit. So that's why I rolled that for a debit. I actually used the Roll Tool and Interactive Brokers to do that. I made a video about that. So I'll put a uh, link to that video above here. And I think some people might be looking to roll some stuff this week anyway. So it'd be a good video to check out if you want to learn how to use the Interactive Brokers rolling tool. Some other things I did. I closed some positions that were expiring this week because I want to take off some Vega 
risk, especially with that meeting coming up on Wednesday. Just see a lot of people were really concerned about that. So thought I would take these out. Don't risk that premium increase or something crazy happening to put these all in the money with less than three days to go at that point. So close these, lock in that gain, and move on. The other thing I did is I decided to put my cash that's been sitting in my account to some use now. And I've been thinking about doing this for a while, just never pulled the trigger because I never sat down to actually do the numbers if I want to set it up. And I ended up buying a bunch of QILD, Jeppy, Nusi, and VYM. Basically, I wanted to put about 35% of my portfolio into like an income generating position that I don't really have to manage. And I think that's going to be something decent moving forward. So I went to the gym today and I was worried that my shorts might fall off if I was doing the treadmill. So instead today I was sitting on the bicycle pedaling away and decided, you know what, let's pull off the phone and actually do the math on this and see if I want to execute it. So here I am working out and just playing my phone. Let me tell you, working on a Google Sheets on the phone, not the best experience, but I did get my work done here. So what I ended up deciding to do was put 35% of my portfolio into like income generating dividends stock or ETFs. And I decided to go with my original plan of doing QILD, Nusi, and Jeppy. And I decided to weight those all equally. I was aiming for about 30%, end up at 28% each for this portion of my portfolio. The other thing I wanted to do was add a little Vanguard high yield fund in here. And that's where VYM comes up. It's a smaller position because my 457 plan, my 403 plan has a lot of stuff invested in Vanguard funds. So a lot of stock exposure there to begin with. So I did want a smaller position. I ended up putting like 8% of this portion of my portfolio into it. And then obviously I have MFA, which is a position that I sold covered calls again. So the, uh, the position is actually adjusted cost basis is negative, which is amazing. So that just literally feels like free money. So anyway, what I did is I figured out how many shares I would need to make these weighted equally. And then over here, you can see how many shares I had to buy to get to that spot because I already had some QILD and Nusi. And the other positions, obviously like VYM and Jeppy, I didn't have any, so those numbers match up. And I chose to look at it like it's a monthly dividend, even though like MFA and VYM pay every three months. I decided to just make my calculations to make it interesting, you know, just to look at how much my dividend would be per month if they paid every month. That's just how I decided to look at it. And anyway, what the result is that I should make about $5,100 per year from this dividend portion of my portfolio now. And what I thought was really interesting was that even though this is controlling $62,000 worth of shares or stocks and ETFs, uh, the margin impact for all of this is only $11,700. So that's the benefit of portfolio margin I'm still trying to learn how to wield that like an expert. I'm still learning how to use it, but uh, it does enable some pretty neat things if you are if you have the money in your account to use portfolio margin. But make sure you know how that works first, or at least at the point that you're not going to over leverage quickly. Just play safe when you're first learning. Uh, anyway, I think that wraps up this video. If you guys enjoyed this, like, sub, subscribe. And if you want to see how to use the Interactive Brokers rolling tool, go ahead and click on this video link. And good luck the rest of the week, guys. Stay safe.